What is up guys? We are going to be doing a replay review today for this Guardian 1 Crystal Maiden Pause 5. See him Spectre. Not an ideal lane. It's not your fault, obviously. But just in terms of like what your game plan might be. You know, you look to be aggressive. Spectre isn't really a super aggressive carry you're probably against like clock earthshaker it's kind of a weird lineup you block the small they're the big camp seems reasonable it's like a lot of region to start with um if you're like anticipating that you're gonna be against like a clock probably this clock is probably in your lane even if it's a core might be good to consider like a wind lace like you're really slow um, so like you can use some of your starting gold to like mitigate if the enemy has like a really big advantage on you a really big threat like if they kill you it's gonna be like running you down Check this clock it doesn't have boots a lot of times they will start with boots though and just to like offset that a little bit uh, just because your hero is so slow so you can like kind of skimp on the region a little bit maybe not skimp but like just one less tango one less fairy fire you know, one less mango, you get the wind lace. Um, maybe don't buy two sentries to start. It's like, it's not really necessary. Especially your level. If you want, you get your own sentry to like block the camp, but like I wouldn't be doing this at your level. Just save the gold for yourself. Um, like, especially if you're not going to be like, if you're going to like go check fog at night to like see if they have a ward and then like plant the sentry, that's like kind of okay. Because it's just like blind throw it out there. It's like, at least half the time you're going to be like wasting 50 gold, which like, it's really helpful for you. Um, so you should always take Q level 1 on Crystal Maiden. The One of the biggest strengths of your hero is you secure the range creep while also like getting a harass in for your core so that your core doesn't have to put themselves out of position to like secure this range creep. So like, maybe we'll see that come into play on the first wave. I like that you're using your W, given that you skilled it. Yeah, but like here, like if you're here, you can like, I mean, maybe your Spectre's going to get this, but maybe he's not, right? And you can Q, secure it, and hit the clock, and be right-clicking him. While the Earthshaker's doing like whatever he's doing. And that would be like... That's kind of what you should be looking to do at level 1 as CM, like, all the time. So I think you should just always take Crystal Nova. I, I don't think there's really any exceptions to that. Yeah, this gets denied. And that, that's your fault uh, for not taking Q. I mean, unless you're specifically getting the... Like, if you're taking your W for, like, a first blood, that's one thing. Although I don't think there's a lot of cases where... Having Frostbite instead of Crystal Nova is what like secures it for you. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure. I'm just gonna double check. Yeah. So if you look at Dota 2 Pro Tracker, uh, just look at what skills they take level one. Almost everybody. Literally almost every game, like these ones where they take W. I have to imagine it's because of like a rune fight, and it's just like just take your Q, just take your Q. Secures the range creep. It's that simple. Um, okay, so the Earthshaker's not really playing the lane. Looks like they de-warded you, so you're body blocking. Okay. Reasonable. There you go, good harass. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And you don't pull here. I think you could like look to play at the Earthshaker a little bit more. Um like there should be this like like, you should kind of be chasing him around a little bit. But, like, staying out of his right-click range, obviously. Like, you want to be kiting him around. Radiance. Especially, like... What does this guy have? Like, this guy doesn't have boots. He's not that fast. And especially given you have a mango and you, like, got him low before, you should kind of be, like, chasing him around a little bit. Which prevents him from, like, screwing with your specter or something. The alternative to that, if you're not going to do this, is, like... 
being over here and right clicking their clock. Like your right clicks are bad, but they're better than nothing. So like, I, I, I think you're kind of playing a little bit too passively in this lane. I think I mentioned this in your Warlock replay too. It's like you can just right click the enemy and that goes a long way. And I, I think you're just underutilizing that aspect on your on your heroes. So you're like coming to try and contest this bounty. I wouldn't bother. I mean, you saw him here, so like I don't know what you thought you were gonna do there. I think it's just a little bit of a waste of time. Could have just been farming the pole, getting the experience. Yeah, and you still don't take your Q CM. Like just to go back again. Like look at level one and two. Uh, one person who took W level 1 did get E level 2, but like, it's very common to have Q and W skill at level 2. Like, that's what makes your hero good, is you're so dangerous at level 2 with these two spells. And like, yes, you need to like, have mangoes to make it work because of this hero's like, terrible base mana pool and like, high mana spell costs. But, if you have the mangoes and you have both spells, you're so dangerous. Um, I mean, you're sitting at full mana this W. I know you weren't always full mana if you bought yourself some more regen. And notice how like little regen you've had to use, right? It could have been a wind lace. Um, and you could have flown yourself out more regen. So I like what you're doing with the poles. And you're like keeping it blocked. I think this guy, oh no, he didn't unblock again. It's like he sentried. So I like what you're doing with the poles, but I think you're just like not playing the lane, not looking to play the lane enough and like just right click the enemy core and be annoying in that way. Because that like supports what your specter wants to do and like takes a little bit of pressure off your specter. But like, you've just been playing very passive. Um, like kind of doing the right thing with regards to poles, but otherwise just like completely passive, which I don't think is like how you want to play CM at all. Um, Especially given how, like, passive people will be at your level. Like, if you're playing just as... Like, you can, like, be more... You can be aggressive because, like, they won't respond correctly. And this is where, like, a Windlace comes in handy. And at this point, this guy's, like, level 5. Because you guys haven't been pressuring him at all. And, like, the ES has also been out of the lane a lot. But you can't get this close to this guy without having, like, a Windlace or Boots. I mean, he still doesn't, but he's still just faster than you because you're slow. Like, if you had Windlace here and your positioning was a little bit better, you wouldn't have died. Uh, so it just comes back to that Windlace earlier and your positioning a little bit. Like, recognize, like, early on in the lane, what they just did to you is, like, a little bit less dangerous because they don't, you know, he doesn't have three points in battery assault and, like, you're closer, you're more even in levels. So, like, earlier in the game, it would have been good to, like, be pressuring this guy more. And now that he's level 5, you, like, can never go near him ever, or he just kills you. So, I find it kind of weird that you, like, were looking to, like, interact with him there when he was level 5, but not before that, when he wasn't quite as strong. It's like, kind of like, you want to be, like, more aggressive early, and then, like, now this phase, you have to really be passive, because if you step near him at all, you just die. Yeah, here. Wow, that's crazy. I think he could have just gone on you there. Um, yeah, you're just completely skipping your Q. I would never do this because you're just at a low MMR and you're going to need to shove out waves. And this is how your hero does that. Like, at your, your MMR, I would always go, like, first point in this, second point in this. Maybe you get a third point in Arcane Aura, depending on how your mana management is going. Or maybe you get your second point in Crystal Nova if you're, like, doing okay and, like, you can, like, really threaten them, you know? And then, like, level 4, you should be 2 one, one. And then level 7, you should be, like, 4 one, one, one. Like, if there, I don't see... Or you could be, like, 3 one, two, one or something. But, like, max this by, like, level, like, 7, 8 for sure. Every game at your MMR. All right, there's just no... You just can't justify not doing it, given how badly that your cores are going to, like, de-push waves and things like that. And, like, how much they'll just, like, passively jungle. You just have to max Crystal Nova at your level. And, like, I think low MMR players... I used to think this way, actually, a long, long time ago. On CM. Be like, oh... 
I'll level my arcane aura to like enable my teammates. And like, I'm just gonna tell you that you shouldn't worry about enabling your teammates with a global passive aura. Like, the amount of net benefit that your teammates are gonna get out of this arcane aura is just not as uh, as much as if you just max Q and are like de pushing the correct waves that your team is not cleaning up. Um, hopefully that makes sense, but like don't look to enable your bad teammates this way. Like look to enable yourself to do what needs to be done in the game. And then, you know, if you end up being one or four, one, four, like you want to go back for your arcane aura because I know it helps you as well. Like that's reasonable to me, uh, even though the frostbite is really good. But um, just most people are not getting a lot of points in the aura early. Like you kind of want to get one or two, maybe three. Like again, Dota 2 Pro Tracker. I mean, maybe you should look this up yourself. Um, but you can see like one, two points in aura by level 10. Um, one, two, three by level 10. One, two by level 10. One, one, two. So you can see like your other abilities are really strong. Um, and not leveling them up early just kind of hurts you. So I think your just conception of how to play this hero is just wrong based on your ability builds. Like your your actual play in the lane was decent, your pulling is decent, but in terms of like how you go about playing Crystal Maiden effectively at your level, um, I, I don't think I don't think you have a good conception of this. So you know, hopefully this helps you a lot, and you'll be able to like kind of do your job more which is like going to be to clean up waves. Because really at this point in the game, 10 minutes, like it'd be nice if you could like go help like another lane and go put like pressure on this PA or something. Um, like you hanging around the specter is not doing a whole lot at this phase in the game. Um, you don't really protect him. You're pretty weak. You're easy to kill. So like Heroes will come up here to try and kill you, and then Spectre doesn't like that, or they'll come try and kill Spectre, and, like, you don't really prevent that. Um, like, it'd be nice if you could, like, go make aggressive plays somewhere else, like, with your Dawnbreaker. Like, you plus Dawnbreaker. Wow, this guy's ability build is terrible also. But, like, you can go play with your Dawnbreaker, right? If you're, like, 2-1-1, one, one, like, you do a lot of damage, and you can follow up really well on his abilities. And instead of this skill build, like, you kind of gonna have no options. Like, I feel like that's what I'm gonna see, is, like, you only have this W ability, like, you can't farm, you're not really good at fighting either. Um, you're very underleveled, I guess somebody else took your tome. TP in here. Finally get a point in Q now. I kind of like where you're playing now, at least. Like, this is, like, more the right part of the map that I like to see. Nice. That's good. Took your ult at 6. I think that was, like, an opportune ultimate. I don't think you usually take your ult at 6. Um, no, I guess most people do now, actually. Yeah, I guess it's pretty common. Most people do take their ult at 6. It is, it is a pretty good ability now. Um, that was good. I like what you're doing now and how you're playing this. I think you'd have just done this like a minute earlier and then having like, you know, being 4-1-1-1, I think would enable this playstyle a little bit more. Obviously you need to like continue like shifting yourself clarities. I think a raindrop is really good on CM just because you're really squishy. So it helps there and then the passive region you like. And yeah, maxing out this arcane aura, this is just not, you're here just not gonna do anything. You're gonna be a wet noodle mana regen bot like you know if you want to like level yourself out of like lower mmrs like you can't play like this because this doesn't enable you to like have an impact on the game like this is like oh i hope my teammates like kind of carry me this game not like you're you're obviously not the carrier of the support but, like, you know it just doesn't give you the ability to like have a high impact on the game like i need you to give yourself the ability to have a high impact on the game which is like pushing out waves, doing damage, um, things like that. So 
you can see, uh, like, item-wise, um, a decent amount of CMs will get a Basilius just to help, because, like, they're not leveling their aura a lot early. Like, this guy has a Basilius. He did take two points in his um, aura by level 10. So, like, that's kind of what you should be looking to go for, maybe. It might help with your mana regen issues if you're having them. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's mostly just, like, clarities. Like, flying yourself out clarity. Like, in this phase in the game, like, if you have, like, a Bassy and you have less points than this, and you fly yourself out clarities, you're like, you'll do okay. This skill build is just so low impact. Um, like, it's really... I'm just gonna tell you, your, t your, your team is just not gonna be utilizing this mana as effectively that's what I just said it's what I said before they're not gonna be utilizing the mana they're getting from this as effectively or to the extent of the impact that you would have if you could just like have maxed crystal nova and like do damage in fights and like push out waves you know even if for whatever reason your team is like perfect at pushing out waves you know, you, you get that one in a million Crusader game where your team is good at pushing out waves. Like, it's still good damage, right, in fights. Like, it's not like it's bad to have that. Uh, I guess you can casually cast your Q whenever you want because you've got four points in uh, your aura, but it's just not, it just doesn't do a lot. Um, so you guys are kind of just grouped up and taking good fights against them. There's a whole lot to say here. Like, you are playing with your team, which is nice. Um, and your team's just playing more coordinated than the other team. So, like, playstyle-wise, I think you guys are doing okay. We're going for the Glimmer. Against Clockwork, I think I would just default to Force Staff first. Um... Yes, Glimmer is good, but they've got a bunch of abilities that cancel your channeled ult. Clock has Hookshot, his Q, Disruptor can silence you or glimpse you, Earthshaker's got a long range stun or close range stun, Sniper can assassinate you. Um, so this, this Glimmer is not really going to like, like Glimmer ulti is not necessarily going to ensure you get your ulti off or survive. And I think just four staff is really effective. I don't I don't like hate glimmer this game as a concept. I just don't think first item glimmer is gonna address what your main problem will probably be. Or even you can cogs t or you can force staff teammates out of cogs too. It's not just a selfish item. Um, this is a cool D ward. Alright, nice ults in turn. Yeah, I think your ability usage and like kind of how you're playing is good. I just think your, um, I just think your skill build doesn't enable this. Like you could be doing it even better with a different skill build, and then we'll see how the items work out. You push lanes out so slow. This you should never walk away from this. Like you guys should want to play down here and pressure this tower, and this is what I mean, right? Like you should be cleaning up. It, does, it doesn't matter what position you are, actually. Like, it literally doesn't matter. Any position, one through five, if you walk away from this wave here, which is about to meet a creep wave here, it's bad. Um, there's nothing more important for you to do on the map than, like, push this wave out into this tower. Uh, there's just nothing. And it just comes down to, like, knowing that you want to pressure this tower and not walking away from free lanes. And like just kind of the, the principle in general that low MMR players don't understand enough, which is just push lanes, right? This is you not pushing the lane. Um, like walking away from that lane is just so bad. I don't know what's going on here. You're like, you're like going to play next to your Dawnbreaker, which is like fine. Just push the lane first and then do it. Or even better, push the lane and then he comes to you because you're in the right spot pushing the lane and he's not. Like he's just sitting in his triangle. Now his PA is massively farmed. You are going four staff next, so that's good. Uh, we probably need four staff and then ghost scepter or aeon disc or something. Nice ult. Didn't cancel. PA deletes from the map. That is life. 
Nothing you can really do about that, so... If he, if he gets on top of you, he gets on top of you. But at least you had an impact before you died with your abilities. Uh, so you're walking bottom. I like it. Okay, maybe walk mid and clean up that wave. Okay, if you expect to clean it up, it's okay. Everybody loves the warden before it flips here. So it seems like you were a little bit hesitant to join this fight here. Like, you got the D ward. I'll just watch this back a little slower so I can understand what's happening. So you got the D ward. They're kind of going on your neck row here. You have a clock in your face, which is terrifying, but then he leaves you. Okay, so I think you were just kind of running the wrong way here. I think if you had been paying more attention to what was happening here, you would have noticed that, like... Dawnbreaker was trying to save your Necro, and I think you can kind of have an impact here. Um, your Spectre also has Haunt, and you have a Global Tinker who can be very close by relatively shortly. He can even TP this Catapult if he's feeling it. Um, so I think you're just like running away from a fight that you guys could conceivably be taking. You've got your ultimate, got all your abilities, and so you do come here late, and then this PA finds you. Yeah, the Glimmer saves you from the PA, which is nice. So yeah, I think you were a little late to that, and I think that could have been a little bit differently if you had, like, obviously, once the clock hooks past you, like, when you see the clock, I don't mind what you did, like, running to the side, like, hoping to not get gone on by him. But then, like, as soon as the clock hooks in, I think you need to, like, look in and see if that's something that you need to go join. Because you were, like, five seconds late, and those five seconds are really important. Uh, just, like, super, super important. So just, I think, just, just a little bit of slow awareness on your part. So, your Spectre's kind of feeding over here. It's kind of weird that they have four heroes here. Like, if I was coaching somebody on this team, I would be like, why are you guys here? But, you know, in Loma of Mars, the enemy team is liable to be doing that. So, it's kind of forcing your Spectre to there. Not really your fault. Let's see what happens next. Oh, looking for things. That's real unfortunate. So they have a ward behind the tower. I didn't. Mi I don't mind you like going to defend there. I think this is a tower you guys should absolutely be defending because it's just very easy for you to defend. I think at this phase in the game, like you can all TP in, and like a tier two tower, like the aura impact or whatever that it gives you, is pretty significant in terms of like defending. Plus the tower damage itself. So I like that you guys are looking to defend there. And it's just a little unfortunate you got like insta picked off. Could maybe go look for a D ward here. It's really important in this situation to just fly your uh, Corey route to D ward. Um, high MMR players do this a lot, and I know for low MMR players, it's just not something that's on your radar. Like it's just too much. If I think it's like too much brain processes, but like you were dead, right? You were dead, and they pr they probably killed you because they had a ward here based on how you died. So like. That can trigger you to be like, okay, when I'm alive, I want to go deward this area. What helps you deward the area better and like get more efficient sentry placement? It's the courier. So like, this is how you can start incorporating this practice is like taking the time while you're dead. This is not that far out of your base. You know, you're not bringing your courier like down here, you know, super far away, right? It's right here. They're tr your triangle. So bring your courier out here to deward, right? Let's see where you put your sentries. You're gonna put your sentry right on the hill. I know you are. Oh, you're not. Okay, well, based on how you died, they definitely had some vision somewhere over here. Like, this clock, like, hooked you when you TP'd in, like, here, from, like, here. I mean, maybe they just saw you, I guess? I would be suspicious regardless. They have a ward in the area. So, like, you could put a sentry, like, here to get, like, these two spots. Or you could, like, do it, like, here if you think they might have a ward down here and check you're using your courier right or your q if you're a hero with an ability that can like gives vision for high grounds so you don't need your courier technically but like you know efficient sentry placement i actually should have mentioned that earlier because a lot of times you're sentrying on these cliffs you're a hero that has an innate ability to like see the high ground so like put your sentries here so it sees the cliff and you can check it with your ability but then it also sees all around right uh, it's like as you go up in mmr you need to be more creative with your warding because people, as you're, 
if maybe you've noticed, but you're constantly dewarding their wards because they're all on cliffs. So like if I was coaching the support on the other team, I would tell them, stop putting your wards on cliffs. And eventually, if you keep going up in rank, the supports you're playing against the other team are not going to be putting their wards on cliffs. And your sentries that are right on top of cliffs are then going to be not as useful. And so especially when you're playing heroes like Crystal Maiden, who can scout the cliff, it's really important to get your sentry to the side to like get the most efficient like area out of the sentry as possible. So you like kind of solo smoke to get some deep wards. Um, wow, well, your pathing here is nuts. I don't mind that you're getting these wards. I don't think two right next to each other is good. Like, just do one or the other. I kind of prefer this one because it's not a cliff ward. They are, they're going to be doing what you're doing. They're just going to check the cliff wards. That's all they're going to do. Um, this is just going to get dewarded, and you just have to know your MMR is going to get dewarded. Like, it's the only spot. It's not the only spot. Like, you did this, right? But it's like the main spot that people at your MMR look toward, and it's like the only spot that people look to deward. So, Unless you're, like, saying that, like, I need this vision for a fight that's definitely going to happen, even if they deward it, you, you shouldn't do this. And, like, those scenarios, like, around Roshan, right? You're like, I'm going to put a ward here, even if they deward it, because I need vision of this area for this Roshan fight or something. Like, that's okay, but, like, this ward, you don't need vision of this area, because you don't need to take a fight right here. And they are going to deward this at some point. Or they probably will. I mean, maybe they won't. It is Crusader, but like, you can easily expect them to. So you're kind of just running around with your team. Kind of a weird place on the map to take a fight, but I guess it sort of works out. Let's back up a little bit. I'm probably going to cut this soon, but um, let's see. So you... Oh, this is... I went back pretty far. This is where you smoke and put the deep ward down. <sighs> yeah, here's what I would want you to do here. Put down the one deep ward. Oh, okay. Well, I'll talk about the pathing because I mentioned the pathing. Your pathing here, like walking in front of this tower, is crazy. You are a crystal maiden. Your whole team is behind you. You are the furthest advanced person on the map. So, like, even if you're going to do this... Like, walk back this way, you know? Walk away from their tower. You're a crazy person for running... Oh, that's a weird replay bug. The tower's there. You're crazy for running right in front of this tower. What you should have done, though, is put your one ward down and then just go push the bottom wave. This is a wave that you should be pushing in with your in hypothetically max crystal nova. Push this in. Push the next wave in. There's a wave right here. It mirrors this one. So it's, like, right here right now. Um... Like, push this all the way in, you have a TP. So when this fight breaks out top, you can just TP there. So this is just poor, like, map play, and, like... Like, this is what your job should be in the low MMR games, is cleaning up these waves. And this is just you not doing it, not doing your job. And so this fight that happens, like, it happens, right? It's whatever. But, like, you could have gotten... You could have pushed this in, applied pressure, forced them to miss creeps... Um, like if you force your creeps into this tower and they don't come here, it forces it like they lose that golden experience. You get the extra like two or three waves of golden experience, which gets you towards your next item, and then you still show up to this fight because you have a TP up. Like that is a hundred percent what you should have done there. And you showing up to this fight, it's the same impact as if you had just TP'd in. And this wave, imagine that this wave is pushed all the way into their tier two, and then your mids pushed in, your bottom would have been pushed in. And then you take this fight. And then the map just looks so good for your team. Um, so I'm going to cut it there. Hopefully you learned a lot. Uh, maybe at some point. I think you said you were going to submit some offline replays next. But um, you don't have to submit the replay. But like try and play some CM games. More like maxing your Q. Kind of fix your skill build early. Try and be a little more involved in the early lane. Even just right clicking the offlaner a bunch. Like I like the pull stuff you're do doing. But there's just downtime where... In that downtime, instead of, like, chilling and hanging out behind your carrier, behind the tower, uh, or, like, over here, you know, I don't know, like, you were, like, kind of letting Earthshaker do whatever you wanted over here, like, just go hit the hit the core, you know, hit the hero in the lane, cast a spell, secure your range creeps with Q, very important, very, 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 very important, you just do that all lane, it's like, you'll, you'll have, like, 12 CS, 
lane creep CS just from like hitting pressing Q and hitting their core plus the range creep and securing it for yourself. Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully that was helpful and um, I'll see you in the next one.